Hello everybody! Welcome to Talk Back February 2023 live stream. We are going to be getting started here. Rachel's on her way up. Um, so if anybody is in here, welcome. Anybody in the room already, please let me know in the comments. Let us know in the comments if the sound is okay, the audio is okay. Um, looks like it can hear me. <clears throat> But I'm never 100% sure with live streaming on YouTube. So you guys let us know. And we will get started here in a second. Hope everybody's having a great February so far. I'm going to go in here and... Okay, like we got a buzzing. I'm gonna go in here and Okay, hold on. Okay, hopefully that's going to fix it. The video should correct itself here in a second. Hopefully that fixed the audio. There we go, there's our video back. All right, let me check this here. Sounds like the audio is good now. All right, guys, sorry about that. They, YouTube does not make it easy to live stream, especially through third-party software, uh, which is what I like to do. Used to be, when YouTube was using Hangouts, it was so much easier. Now, Rachel's here. Rachel, you're gonna have to sit way up here, unfortunately. Okay. But the camera can only see from right here, so. Because I had to put the microphone on the camera. Oh, okay. Can people hear me? Wait, I think we got quite a delay. Yeah, it's about. I said the buzzing is gone. Fix the audio. Yeah. Check this here. Wow, we have a lot of delay today. Played through third-party software, uh, which is what I like to do. Used to be. Yeah, the problem is that I've got a lot of metal right around here, and so if I use uh, an extension cable to get the microphone closer, um, it interferes, the metal interferes with it. That's where the buzzing comes from. Mm. So, hope Rachel's going to have to speak up, unfortunately. Um, unless, like I said, unless you want to move closer and point I, towards. I did move closer. Um, Alright, so anyway, guys, so today we're going to be 
is our talk back. Um, we apologize, we're super late. There's been a ton of stuff going on. I had uh, a trip at the beginning of February and then I got COVID at, down in Florida, brought it back with me. We're assuming. We're assuming, yeah, I think so. He came down sick just a day or two after he got home. Yeah, so um, that really set me back with everything as well. Um, plus, we've had some, I've had some big videos coming out. Hopefully, you guys have seen those. Some of that we're going to be talking about today when we're answering our questions. Um, but yeah, so a um, couple things coming up in the future, in the very near future. So next week, I'm actually going to Colorado to help out at a winter camp for blind kids, uh, the Extreme Mobility Camp. I'm going to be out there for a week doing all kinds of fun stuff with a bunch of blind kids. Um, we're going to be skiing, snowmobiling, um, sleigh riding, tubing. We're going to be doing, having a blast uh, out there in Colorado. Uh, I will be making a video about that, which will come out, you know, afterward. Uh, and maybe like sending out some shots, some pictures on Instagram and stuff of the beautiful Colorado Rockies. I'm excited about it. Uh, and then about a week after that, I am going out to California to CSUN. And um, let me move this so you guys, I'll do this so you're not seeing that echo. <laughs> um, I'm going out to CSUN in Anaheim. That is, I think, around March 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, around there. So if you are out in the LA area or California area um, and it's feasible for you, I'd love to have you come out and say hello. Remember, as always with these AT conferences, the exhibit hall is free. It doesn't cost anything to come out to the exhibit hall and walk around and check out all the amazing stuff. And there will be some amazing stuff, I'm sure. So uh, I will be there and uh, looking forward to that. And then it's supposed, oh no, one more trip after that. <laughs> March, or, uh, April 1st, no, April 3rd and April 4th, I will be in Missouri, Columbia, Missouri at the Missouri Assistive Technology Conference. I will be doing some presentations and I'll also have a booth. So if you're gonna be attending that conference or you're interested, check it out. Um, definitely stop by and say hello. I'd love to say, uh, see you guys and, and shake hands and all of that. Um, then it will finally slow down and I'll get, be able to get back to relaxing. <laughs> and then it's going to be not slow at home because that's Skylar approaching graduation. So yeah, yeah it will be quite busy actually. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. So um, let's get into the, the questions um, and then we'll have some time at the end. You guys can ask questions if there's anybody in the chat and um, go from there. Okay. I'll get started, Sam printed out a couple of comments and questions for me to read here. Uh, first thing is from the voice Gruse. Yeah, G-R-U-S. I'm not sure if it's... it's Gruse or Gruss. Gruss, yeah. yeah. Talking washes. And it says, how to change the incoming... Oh, I guess this isn't about that, but it must have just been on that video. Um, yeah. No, um, I think I didn't have anything on there. Did it go right to the next video? Or is there... I guess. I don't know. Okay, how to change incoming call background oh, well, that's right. on Samsung and Android. Is that a video? That was a video. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I just, there weren't any um, specific questions on the Talking Watch video. It was a lot of people, um, they like, they seemed to like the, the, the watches. They liked what they could possibly do as far as features and um, seemed to enjoy the video. So that's about it for that one. Yeah, then the next one was how to change the incoming call background on your Samsung device or Android in general. And um, I don't think I had any questions no. on that. Yeah, so. <laughs> Just, the features don't write them down on here because <laughs> it's confusing. Well, I wanted to make sure to mention them. Um, a lot of people really appreciated that as well. A lot of Android users. Um, I In that video, I also included some wallpapers that you guys could download and I gave a link to that to use for your incoming call background. And several people said they had used those and, and were, were really enjoying them and thanked me for that. So, um, yeah, so all in all, a good one. Some people said that it didn't work on their device. Maybe they had an older phone and it wasn't, you didn't get the option to change it. Uh, there's tons of free apps out there on the Google Play Store for changing your incoming call 
or your your um, ID uh, caller ID wallpaper. So if you can't do it in your phone natively, you can do it with apps, free apps. So look into those. Okay, next one is the Hable one, and Bazo Bazo said that looks really <laughs> interesting. Sam, thanks for that video. How about writing with it though? Are there different modes for those that know Braille and those that don't? Yeah, so first of it, the Hable one is a, um, which I actually have it around here somewhere. I think it's over there. It's a little remote control um, that has a Braille keyboard. The, the, the buttons on the remote control for, your, it's smart, for a smartphone, they're laid out kind of in a Braille keyboard fashion. And so, um, no, to answer the question, I don't think so. I think it's just simply, it's just like a regular remote control. You can get into writing a text message and then you would use the Braille keyboard to write out your text message. So that's kind of one of those things where for this particular remote control, you need to know how to write in Braille in order to type out a message in Braille. Uh, obviously you could use it to trigger your dictation and just dictate your message. That's always possible. But if you want to type out a message, um, it's really designed for people that know Braille um, but like I said in the video, it's a great way to learn Braille, to practice your Braille. And um, it's uh, for Braille users, it's going to be a much more efficient and familiar way to type out a message on their device. Okay, Mackenzie Parker said, wow, that sounds awesome. I wonder if you could pair this thing to an Amazon Fire tablet. So yes, yeah, it's, it's just a Bluetooth remote control. So you can pair it to whatever you want uh, that uses Bluetooth. Uh, within... Within reason, I guess there's another question coming up here in a second, but um, so phones, tablets, probably even computers. I did not pair it up to my computer, but anything that you're using a screen reader, um, chances are this is going to work to control it. Okay, and Odyssey of Steven says, hey Sam, I hope you had a wonderful time in Orlando. One of these days I'll make it up there and finally get to meet you in person. I was wondering, can you connect this to your Apple Watch or Android Watch? Yeah, this is the one I was talking about. I don't think so. I think, um, you know, the watches only connect to your phones. Um, <clears throat> so I don't think you can connect anything to the Apple Watch. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. Anything that you can pair up a Bluetooth keyboard to, you should be able to connect this remote control to as well. And so I don't think you can pair up a Bluetooth keyboard to your Apple Watch or your Android Watch. So I don't think so. Okay, um, Verne Pavriel said, great video again, although I'm not sure I need this device, however, it triggers one question. Is, the where, is there a way of connecting a standard PC computer style keyboard to my iPhone? I imagine via Bluetooth. After that, I would like to write emails, etc., including, most importantly, spell checking, utilizing voiceover. Thanks. Yes, so, yeah, like I just said, um, you absolutely can. can connect a Bluetooth keyboard to any smart device these days, uh, any phone, any tablet. And in fact, it's, it's a really convenient way to control a tablet, especially, um, and kind of turn it into a computer. Um, and if you're using a screen reader with your device, whether it's voiceover or talkback, you can then use the keyboard and different keyboard commands to control the screen reader. So navigating around, Swiping, double tapping, all of that, you can do that with keyboard commands instead. So it's it, a lot of people really like to do that. Okay. All right, the next one is the See Me Cane. Blind Babe Beth said, I do a lot of walking in dim lighting and at night, so this would be such an incredibly useful tool. Not just to be seen by others, but to also benefit the remaining vision I have. I've never found a torch that's both powerful enough and small enough to fit in my handbag. This is so awesome. Yeah, so a um, <clears throat> ton of response to the CB Kane video, which is fantastic. I appreciate it, everybody that's left comments. I think there was like 70-something comments on there already. Um, two and a half thousand people saw it within 24 hours, so really, really cool. A um, lot of great comments, and I there's going to be a bunch on here that we're going to go through. But um, several people were asking about international shipping, and I pulled this one out because she said torch. So I'm assuming she's in another country. Um, you know, they don't call them flashlights in the UK, they call them torches. So uh, I think they are working on getting international shipping. If anybody is in another country and is interested in this, even Canada, 
Uh, I know that they're planning on doing that at some point. The, the cane is still very new. In fact, it's, it's just up for pre-order. It's not even fully out yet. Uh, so this is stuff that they're all, they're going to be working out. So just be patient, I guess, if you're in another country. Okay, that guitar said, hello, Sam, a question. How did you deal with the non-foldable cane on the plane? Did you have to put it on the overhead compartment? Thanks for a great video. Which, this was a concern you had, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And, and several people asked this question in the video. Um, so I had never taken a rigid cane traveling. I'd only taken foldable canes, collapsible canes. Um, and I did a video about different types of canes, and that was one of the things I said, that a lot of people really like a rigid cane because apparently it transfers the um, feeling, the tactileness through the cane much better to the person than a foldable cane. But I said the big drawback is portability. you got to deal with that cane. And yeah, I, I, that was my first experience. Um, going to and from the conference, I flew on four different airplanes, and one of them... They didn't care. They just let me hold on to it. And I've actually, I've got the cane right here. So I just basically sat in my, in my seat, kind of like this, with the cane just on my shoulder, going down into my, my feet, foot well area. Um, but the other three, they did not let me do that. They wanted to put the cane up into the um, overhead storage area. And even though it's a long cane, the, the storage areas, they have, they're, they're segmented, uh, but the walls have openings in them. So they just kind of thread it through one of those openings and stuck it into the back of the uh, storage thing. And I was, I was a little con con concerned because, you know, this, this is, wasn't officially my cane at the time. I was just reviewing it. And I'm like, these are not cheap canes. I don't want somebody just throwing their bag in there and smashing the cane. Um, but they were really good about it, and you know it was right there ahead of uh, above me if I needed it. I didn't need it, uh, but yeah, that's what we did in three of the planes, um, and it was much more convenient than sitting there holding it the whole time. That was a bit of a pain. Okay. Um... Force Disciple One said, great video, Sam. I noticed that you had the cane laying on the floor while charging. Is the cable long enough for the cane to be charged upright? Uh, yes, it is. The cane or the charging cable is about a five foot long cable. So you totally could. I, I use that plug out in the hallway here. I don't know why. It's just convenient to get to. All my plugs in my studio here are behind furniture or already taken up by a bunch of stuff. So if I need to charge something quickly, like a battery or my, you know, microphones or something, I'll stick them right there. And so that's just what I did and, and got the shot there. But yes, absolutely. It's five foot long charging cable. Okay. Um, Dave Hartline says, Sam, maybe I missed it, but is the tip hook and loop or push on? No, you did not miss it. I totally forgot. Actually, I had it in the video and then I must have cut it out um, for time, but I talked about the tip. The tip is um, a threaded tip, so it screws in, um, and I think it's an eighth inch thread. Uh, so let me see if you guys can see what I'm doing here. Yeah, maybe. There you go. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's so it's it's a threaded cane tip. Um, so if you have, it's not a hook, it's not a slip on. It's threaded, so if you if you can find a another threaded in a different tip, eighth inch I think is what it is. It will fit on this one, so it does have interchangeable lenses or uh, excuse me, um, <laughs> cane tips. Okay, and then um, David also said, "Hi Sam, there are issues with the coupon code. I should be billed at one thirteen fifty, but just received an email receipt for two hundred dollars. I think the email is bad. I think I was only billed the correct amount, which you saw this comment." fairly shortly after you posted the video, right? Yeah, somebody um, somebody told me that they were having issues pre-ordering, and I sent Kelvin a, a message, and he said they were working on it. They had some trouble with the website, maybe kind of got overloaded or something. So um, I do, in the if you're having any problems, in the video description, right below the, the website link is the email for the sales team. So if you're having any problems, send them an email and let them know. Um, I think Kelvin got the, or the team got the website fixed up pretty quickly. 
Uh, I saw a lot of other comments. People had no problems doing the uh, pre-order. One thing uh, several people mentioned is that you want to definitely want to click the button next to where you put in the promo code because that's what's going to activate the code and get you the uh, discount. That actually applies it. You can't just type it in. Exactly. Yeah. So you want to click that button and then it will reflect the $75 off. Okay. <coughs> so yeah, that, that was David Hartline who is actually, I saw him in the comments. He's on the light. He's on the listen to the live stream oh, right good. now. So if, if you have a receipt for the full amount, you might want to reach out to them via their email and say, Hey, I intended, I applied the code. It doesn't seem to have worked. And you know, hopefully they'll honor that and, and get you a, re a partial refund or something. Yeah. Um, Especially within the month of March before the end of March. Frank Becker said, it looks like a lightsaber from Star, War Star Wars with Obi-Wan blind Obi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it bright enough so that people with a bit of vision can also use it as a lamp? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I talked about it in the video, how I used it in my hotel room to get some extra light. I used it in the elevator to get some extra light. Um, I went walking through the garage the other night and I, I was holding the cane. I was going outside and it was nighttime and I, so I turned the cane on so I could see going past the car and wasn't bumping anything. Um, so the one thing about these types of canes and I've done reviews on these before is that uh, when it's turned on, especially at night, it can be a very bright light right there in front of you. So it can wash out some of your surroundings, um, if, especially if you do have decent night vision. I don't. But, but one thing I do like about this is because the, the handle is actually larger than the tube, if you position it straight out in front of you, the handle actually blocks the light from the tube and then it's not over it's not super bright it's kind of like eclipsing you know when the moon eclipses the sun all of a sudden then you can look at the sun and you know so it, it kind of works like that and it, then it works like a flashlight right in front of you and it works pretty well so you're seeing the the light illuminating other things but you're not looking at the actual light source. yeah it's like putting your hand in front of a bright light you know all of a sudden you can see better that bright light's not blaring right at you okay um Okay, so that, that's actually it. That's all the okay. Okay. That's all the questions that were on there. Let me look in the chat here of the thing and see what we've got going on here. Your sister's in here. Hi, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Hopefully, you guys can hear Rachel okay too. She's kind of off axis for the uh, microphone. Tabitha said that their spouse is pre-ordering the uh, the see me cane for them on Friday. Good. Good. Rehan, Rehan, Rehan said, "Hi Sam, would you be doing any videos on OrCam My Eye anytime soon? You've done videos, haven't you?" I've done several videos on My Eye and the OrCam Read. Um, I, I don't have any plans to do any any videos anytime soon because they haven't really changed anything since the last video I did. So if you go on YouTube and you search OrCam My Eye, my video is probably one of the first ones that's going to pop up. Um. And Nico Gary, I think I think his message got partially cut off, but it says, Hey Sam, I shared the see me cane information with the deaf blind division and someone over there said that this is a fake. I said no, that there is a guy that actually made the cane. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well, I'll, I'll keep an eye out to see if you finish that because it, it said and that they can and then it stopped. But definitely encourage them to watch uh, Sam's video. Yeah, not a fake. Or, I, or this it. video at this point because he's got the cane right here. I got it right here. I am looking at it. And, and you know, Sam didn't make the cane. Sam's not getting, it. you know, he's not getting money from the sales of the cane or anything like that. So it's not like he's trying to make money off people on this at all. No, although seeing how many people have pre-ordered, I wish I had negotiated a little <laughs> bit of commission, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm not making anything on the sales of the, of the cane. <laughs> You're using my code, my blind life code, but I don't get anything from that. So I, it's just it's just to help you guys out. Um, William Davis said the NFB has a new carbon fiber folding cane now. He thinks it's available in the marketplace. My favorite, my favorite cane that I use is a folding NFB cane. It's 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 the Chris uh, Chris uh, Parks P A R K S Chris Parks uh, branded cane. It's the the basic. Like even when they give out a free cane from NFB, it's that basic cane. I just it, it's so super lightweight. 
Um, and I've got a seven segment, so it folds up nice and small. I, it's one of my favorite canes. I don't know if it's carbon fiber, though. I might need to check that out. Um, you never announced winners from last, week, last month's thing. We're going to announce winners right now. So, yeah. So when Sam was apologizing about it taking so long, this is really the main thing that we need to apologize about, that he never got a video sent out from last month's uh, talk back yes to announce the winners and I don't even remember what the prize was oh sure merch right yeah yeah so I've got it all loaded up we're gonna pick one right now hopefully if if it goes well um, I think I just oh I got to do math I forgot let me see what it can do. five plus two yes. seven <laughs> good job <laughs> I like this kind of math <laughs> and then I think I click this and then, I think now I go over here. Um, Did I forget something? I don't know. I'm, I'm looking. You want to... All right. We're going to try and pick a winner here in a second. Okay. So, yeah. Get YouTube comments, and it says the amount of unique comments is 29. And then, and then yeah, you can scroll over to the other side. What am I doing? Here. Do you want to do the remote? The... Oh, no mouse, mouse right here. I, I cannot because your head's in the way for me to see majority. Okay. Lean back. Oh, I didn't, I didn't go down far enough, did I? Yeah. Okay, so the winner is Frank Bierman. Frank B I E R M A N N. Comment: The Working Blind series is amazing, and I and. What is IMMO? In my honest opinion. Oh, modest. <coughs> it's modest because it's not IMHO. Oh, yeah. Once per month. You were asking how frequently they should yeah. do the thing. He said once per month, and they said, shirt be okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Frank, you, you won. You won the shirt. Frank Bierman. Okay, we'll go ahead and pick a backup just in case. So, Frank, um, email Sam at... Sam at theblindlife.net. Yes. Send me an email with your contact information, and... Um, We'll we'll figure it out. Okay, we'll pick up a we'll pick a backup winner just in case um, we don't hear from Frank. Yeah. Nancy Parker says, "Hey Sam and Rachel, I'd love to get a Blind Life shirt. I also feel so much lighter after listening to you and Rachel joking, supporting, and encouraging each other, and all of us listening each time we have a talk back session. Thank you." Awesome. Nancy? Nancy. Nancy Parker. Nancy Parker. So Nancy, Frank and Nancy, both of you guys send out your contact information, Sam at the And we'll uh we'll we'll take care of that. Okay. Um and a new message just came at Alexis Beltran said, Any talk on the TCL Ray Neo X two yet? I don't know what that is. TCL? That's I have no idea what that is. Okay, Alexis, uh, give us a little more info. Cancel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, TCL. Let me Google it. What is? Michael Gillespie said, I ordered my cane about four hours after the video went live. Do we have a count on how many pre-orders happened? No, I, have, I haven't talked to um, Kelvin um, or any of his team. I, I, I got to give a huge thank, out, thank you to Angie who is part of his team that was in the ch in the comments answering oh, questions. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, she answered a ton of questions um, and talked a lot about how they're looking into international shipping and all of that. But no, I don't know. I don't know what the um, pre-order numbers are yet. I should talk to them maybe at, after the end of the first weekend, see what, what they are. Kelvin will also be at CSUN. If anybody wants to see one of these canes in person, he'll be at CSUN, and I believe he will be extending the, uh, or he'll be doing the discount there as well. So if you're going to CSUN and you want to see it in person first, great time to do that. Okay. Um, Alexis said it's, <laughs> sorry, it's a, uh, it's CES AR glasses. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, TC, yeah, I thought TCL, TCL or whatever that was. I thought that was like an electronics manufacturer. No, I, I haven't, I, I did see those, just like a little ner news blurb about them, but I haven't seen much of any more information than that. I wonder if they'll be at CSUN. I don't know, I doubt it. I, I don't know, it's, it's not really for visually uh -oh. impaired necessarily, it's just kind of AR. Oh, uh, okay. Um, 
but I'm I'm actually considering going to going to CES next year, and um, so I'm excited about seeing all the cool stuff there. Okay. Um... Bareback Phoebe said, in the new Seeing AI app, there is the option to do indoor navigation. It's actually an amazing part of the revised app. A person can create a route indoors and then share it with me. It works great. Yeah, Seeing AI, they put out, they've, they've really um, improved the app a ton. I need to do a follow-up video on uh, my original one's kind of old. But, yeah, there's some really cool stuff in there. I mean, that's really cool. You could, like, does that mean that, like, if we went somewhere busy... And we were seated, and then you needed to go to the bathroom. Like, could we create that route? And then, yep, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then, and then, but what's super cool with the sharing is that someone could go to like the airport and map out a route to maybe not the airport or like like a like a concert venue and map out the route to the bathrooms and then share that with people so mm -hmm. that they could then follow that to go to the bathrooms. That's cool. Yeah, or the museums, things like that. Okay. <clears throat> Coda Gray is here. Hello, Coda. <coughs> um, hi from Israel, Liat. So, Israel. Nice. Um, Alexa. <laughs> sorry. Cancel. <laughs> A. Beltran said CES conference covered the TCL radio. Right. Okay. Bevan Weber. I'm having trouble hearing. Can you say that again? Mute. Stop. Alexa. I'm sorry. Mute. Okay. Um, okay, so Bevan Weber said, Hi, Sam. Can a person still triple tap to zoom on the latest Android version instead of using the accessibility button? Um, uh, you, had to, you had to bring that up in, in the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that's like driving me crazy about Android right now. So I recently updated my, my phone and magnifier is completely different. And I'm, I'm still trying to figure it all out, wrap my head around it. Um, it says you can. It says you can triple tap, but it do doesn't seem to be working for me. It seems to only work with the, the accessibility shortcut button. Um, so it says yes. <laughs> it seems that yes, but in my experience, no, it's not working for me. I don't know. I'm going to keep on researching and then probably put out a video. Okay, uh, Richard Reeves says, do you know of any assistive technology that could detect chest height or head level? Canes are great for low and that's it. I mean, yeah, there's, there's well, there's the WeWalk cane. It does the, uh, it has the sonar, infrared dete um, obstacle detection, and it does haptics. Uh, so if it detects something in your way, waist level and above, it will vibrate, letting you know there's something there. Uh, the Sunu band will do that. The Buzz Clip will do that. There's, there's actually several devices in development that are wearables, like a vest or something like that, or a backpack that has sensors that will detect obstacles in front of you. Uh, so yeah, there are several things that will do that. The problem I've always had with them is, you know, it'll start buzzing, and it, so that means okay, somewhere waist level and above in front of me there's there's something that I'm about to run into but it doesn't tell me where it doesn't say you know is it my face is it my chest is it my one of my arms you know is it a stop sign is it a tree branch uh, it, it just it just lets you know there's something there and it does but it does vibrate quicker and stronger as you get closer but it's still just we haven't figured out how to tell the person exactly where it is yet yeah I, I remember though when you were, this is years ago, when you first were testing the Sunu band, I was impressed because we were in a hotel and they had one of those temporary blocking things, you know, like they would have like at a movie theater or a concert where they can just pull that little strap from one post and yeah, latch it into barrier. the next post where it's just, you know, it's just the link, it's just the thickness of like a seat belt coming across and the Sunu band picked that up and I was, yeah I was pretty impressed with that because that's a, a it doesn't have a lot of, uh, density to it. You yeah, know? yeah. But, yeah. Um, L Hamill 64 said, I've never liked triple tap anyway. It makes a subtle lag that I can't stand. <laughs> You're, you use triple tap all the time, don't you? I do. I, I, I prefer the triple tap over the... Um, I think 
well, until they kind of messed it all up, Android, in my opinion, had a better magnifier, screen magnifier, with the one finger triple tap, two fingers to move around, pinch to zoom to make it bigger or smaller. Uh, I just felt like that was a better experience than iPhone's three finger double tap. Um, three finger double tap and slide to make it larger or smaller. I just, it, I liked Android's better. But then they had to go and mess it up. <laughs> and it's it's very possible it's just something I'm doing wrong. I haven't figured it out yet. Okay, I think I've answered any questions in the comments. If anyone else has any questions or comments or whatever, please leave them in there. I am looking for them. It looks like we got about 64 people in here right now, so that's good. Pretty cool. See, now I have top messages on instead of all messages, so let me scroll back ah. and make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't think I did. We didn't um, connect to TikTok this time. No, we didn't. If you guys would like to follow me over on all the other social medias, I, I welcome that. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of that. I haven't, uh, like I said, I've been, since I was laid out with COVID for a while, I haven't been posting much. Hopefully we'll get back to that soon. Um, I do have, just to kind of give you guys a little heads up of what's coming up in the future. Um, my coverage of ATIA, I've got those videos coming out probably next week. Um, I have a video coming out on these smart audio glasses that video will come out in a couple of days and then i have um i have another cane that i'm doing a review of so doesn't light up but it's uh it's a really cool cane i'm very excited about it it's called the all-terrain cane and it was developed by a gentleman dave out in arizona who likes to go hiking and he really needed a cane that was durable enough to go hiking with, could hold his weight if he needed to lean on it for whatever reason. And so he, de he designed his own cane and it's pretty cool. So stay tuned for that video coming out in the next several weeks. Okay, handsome blind guy said, is this blind people related? I just got here. Yes, <laughs> it is blind people related or, you know, visually impaired people, whatever. Handsome, Not, yeah. handsome blind guy left a lot of comments on the see me cane video as well ah. and i love that name handsome blind guy that's that's that was my nickname in college <laughs> sam overuses that line he, love he loves that little joke that was my nickname in college it works in so many different situations <laughs> it's very versatile okay let's see we got some comments here carla bell said my airpods have issues syncing using seeing ai it disconnects and reconnects every couple of seconds. It says needs to connect, but does no does not reconnect by itself. I click OK and then it does it again. Oh, that's would that, would that be seeing an AI or was that just like a how, was the app would the app affect the connectivity of the ear earpad? I don't know. <laughs> Earpads. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's an odd one. That would be super annoying. Um, Mike said, hey, Sam, do you find audible crosswalks or qu crosswalks in general adequate in your neighborhood? Well, our neighborhood doesn't have any crosswalks. <laughs> neighborhood doesn't have any. There's one over by my office that I think works well. I, I It works great for me. Is um, it audible? Yeah, it, it says it, it does the countdown. Walk, walk, 12, 11, 10. <laughs> yeah. And I actually I appreciate it. I think it works great. Now, it, they're supposed to be where you know you you press the button. If you press and hold the button, it will give you. It'll say what cross streets you're at. Like it'll announce yeah. those. I have yet to find one that does that. They're supposed to, but I haven't found one that does that. Um, but yeah, I think it works fine. I am meeting with a guy uh, who's out of New York City. They're they're going to be in Kentucky in later on in March. And um, we're meeting up. They have an app that apparently you just point it at the crosswalk or the other side, and it will tell you when the crosswalk is green, when it's safe to go. Um, and I think it does some more information. That'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it'll be cool. Hopefully, it's a free app. I, I, 
I don't know. It's something like that. If they're like, you know, it's gonna be twelve ninety nine a month. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. Nobody's gonna nobody's gonna spend that. Yeah. For for something that does just does that. Okay. Um, we've got someone here from the Philippines. That's cool. Um, Bevan Weber said, "Have you reached out to Samsung about Triple Tap?" No, no, um, I have not. Do you have a contact at Samsung? I do not. Um, it would just be the accessibility department. Okay. Um, you probably should. I it's it's one of those things is I haven't devoted enough time to really dive into it. Um, so yeah, I should though. <clears throat> okay. She who sets off our echo said, in your opinion, which wearable AR is best right now? Uh, I honestly, I haven't, I haven't tried nearly all of them. Um, I just watched a video the other day and it was testing out like eight different wearable uh, AR VR glasses and not in the vision related world. It was just VR glasses. So there's a lot on the market right now and I haven't tried out hardly any of them. Um, now, if you're talking about in the low vision space, um, not too many of them, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess they are a, considered AR, but uh, the Patriot just came out with a new feature. Um, they're going to be sending me one of their headsets to do a review of, so stay tuned for more information. But they basically they are doing what the Vision Buddy does by streaming the content, uh, and it seems like they're streaming the content without any lag, without any latency, no delay at all. That's which is one of the big issues with the Vision Buddy is that there was about a one second delay, um, and that was always frustrating. But apparently, Patriot has solved the problem, and their headset is not does not have any delay. I saw it for just like half a second <laughs> at ATIA. I didn't really get a chance to play around with it too much, but they're supposed to send me one. So if that's true, I think that's going to be fantastic. That The Samsung VR headset, Iris Vision Live, Patriot Viewpoint, those are the ones that have worked the best for me and seem to work the best for a lot of people. So if they can fix that streaming thing, that's going to be huge. Okay, Michael Wolgoleski said, because of your show, I have the Orcam Read and the Clover Book Plus. I introduced both of them to the Milwaukee VA Low Vision Clinic. Nice. That's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. Um, and William Davis said, I really found your channel by accident, but I'm super glad I did. You've got great information. Thank you. Awesome. Welcome. And Tawny said, LOL, Dylan uses the that was my nickname in college line all the time now. <laughs> Dylan is, is Sam's nephew. <laughs> My nephew Dylan. See, I'm telling you, it works in so many situations. <laughs> um, William Davis said the Envision glasses are really cool. Are those ones you've tried? Yeah, I've tried the Envision. Um, yeah, they're they're pretty cool. They're 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 not VR uh, or not VR. Excuse me. Not, they're not. Um, they don't have a screen, so they don't do like magnification and that sort of thing. So that's something to consider with the Envision glasses. But um, yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, Greta Wareham just said, Hi, Sam, what is the name of the glasses you just held up? Which I'm assuming are ah. those right there. And those are not VR glasses. These are not VR glasses. So let's talk about these for a second. I have a video coming out probably um, literally like Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm going to put the video out. These are the Rocket, R-O-K-I-T, um, IQ Solo Smart Audio Glasses. <laughs> quite a name, I know. <laughs> but these are Ray-Ban style sunglasses that have Bluetooth audio in the arms here. So you can uh, sit there and connect it to your phone and you can listen to music, you can listen to audiobooks and all of that while wearing the glasses. Pretty cool. And these are the giveaway today. Oh. Yeah, one of you lucky blind lifers could possibly win these glasses. We will give uh, information on how to do that at the end of the video. Yeah, stay tuned to the end of the video to learn how you can win these glasses. Okay, handsome blind guy said, where are you guys at? I'm in Stockton, California, so often my cane doubles as a defensive weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Stockton. Anytime I think of Stockton, I think of the um, uh, UFC fighters that are out of Stockton. Um, we're in central Kentucky. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit 
a little bit uh, less of a dangerous area. You might get trampled by a horse here or a um, some type of gopher or something. Groundhog. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure on the name here. Baron Sinkole or something said, I use the plus volume up and the accessibility gesture on my Samsung to enable magnification. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's several ways to do it. Um, um, Tawny said, my wearable makes me feel motion sick. Is that just me or is that a setting? Tawny, I'm certain it would make me feel motion sick too. No, a lot of people have that issue with those. I know uh, when I try to do like just VR uh, stuff, I could not. Well, I can't even play most video games anymore. If it's not old school 2D like, you know, Frogger or Donkey Kong, <laughs> I can't play it. Yeah, a lot of people have that problem, uh, the motion sick. If you're moving around a lot, it's worse. Um, and then a lot of people have the problem where it, it gets real hot inside the wearable also. Well, we've got someone here for, in, from Turkey and from Newfoundland. New, <coughs> Newfoundland. 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 I see it and I want to say Newfoundland, but yes. I, as soon as it comes out of my mouth, I'm like, that's not That's right. awesome. Welcome, guys. International. And uh, Rob London said, just want to say thanks for the channel. You fill a huge void. Your videos make our tech understandable to the side, and I love keeping up on tech. Much appreciated from Vancouver, Canada. Awesome. Sam loves keeping up on tech, too. Yeah. Is this another person from Turkey? we got two people from Turkey in here. Um, this person says, hi. Sam, hi from Turkey. I will come to the USA this summer. If possible, I want to meet you. I'll send an email. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Send an email. We'll see if we can make it happen. Um. Okay. Have I missed any? You guys, if I've missed any comments or questions that you think Sam needs to address, please type them in again because I feel like I'm caught up. Okay, here we go. Um, the app B said, any suggestions on a device that could help me measure liquid medication, like an accessible dropper, like counting how many drops or milliliters? No, unfortunately. That would that, be really helpful. Yeah, that's a common problem I, I've heard before too, especially parents that have to give medication to like Kids. Little ones, yeah, right? and they use droppers. Um, unfortunately, like we did when when our daughter was young, is Rachel would draw a line on the dropper in Sharpie, and I just did my best to get around that line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, luckily Skylar was never taking anything that, like, yeah. if her her for dosage was slightly off, it wasn't gonna <laughs> kill her or anything like that. <laughs> We're talking basic stuff. Yeah, but. yeah. Uh, yeah, so. But yeah, uh, I mean, you have to have enough workable vision to make that hack work. I know. You know. I don't know if you could do it now, even. No. And really, unfortunately, there isn't. I mean, unless you're using some kind of magnification while you're doing that, honestly, yeah, there really isn't. Uh, if you can somehow get the dosage down to like a teaspoon or a tablespoon, then you could at least make that work. Uh, with, you know, making sure you're getting the right amount using a, an actual teaspoon or a tablespoon or something like that. But the droppers, um, the little ones that you pour into and then they drink, yeah. those, I just there's really no good way to do it that I know of. If anybody has any suggestions, please let us know because I've, I've, I've run into that problem before. Yeah, yeah, it's not uncommon. Uh, Carla Bell said, we use a talking scale for measuring everything liquid and ask Alexa to convert ounces to grams and things like that. There you go. But I'm not sure. Most talking scales are probably not going to be sensitive enough. Yeah, it's for such a small Such amount. a small, yeah, a really small liquid dose like that. But for cooking and stuff like that, that probably works great. Yeah. You know, I mean, here in America, we measure everything by volume, but we're like... The only ones. I feel like most other places, when in when you're looking at recipes and stuff, a lot of it is in grams. Yeah. Which makes sense. 
I remember once having a conversation with someone on online and they were talking like they were like like angry it like made them angry like how can you make an accurate you know especially like with baking they were like you, it needs to be weighed it needs to be weighed like I, I didn't make up the rules I just, I just live here <laughs> yeah I don't, have, I don't have strong feelings one way or there I'm not going to defend that we should measure it by volume because it probably isn't the best way like I don't understand it either but no one's <laughs> listening to me Carla Bell said let's invent something and make tons of money there you go <laughs> I feel like anyone who ever has access to a university, I think that would be fantastic to pose to um, design or engineering, you know, like uh, mechanical engineering students or something like that, because there's got to be a way. There's got to be something, and you just need yeah. creative people with time on their hands to, to come up with a solution. Jason said, hi, hi, Sam. Jason from northwest corner of Indiana. Love the tech talks. Keep it up. That <laughs> I, means he's almost in Chicago. Hi, Jason. Okay. Well. All right. Should we? Close, yeah, I would say we're getting close to an hour. I don't see any other comments in here that I haven't addressed. Um, Shall we go over instructions for winning the glasses? Yes, let's talk about the giveaway. So, once again, these are, make sure that we're in, yeah, there we go. These are the Rocket uh, Smart Audio Glasses. It's not focusing. Yeah. There we go. Um, they are, once again, they are the Ray-Ban style. If anybody's interested, they're about $79. Um, I, as I said, I'll have a video coming out very soon that's going to have a link, you know, and all that. If so, if you are interested, they're pretty cool. I do like them. Uh, but they have, you can connect via Bluetooth, Bluetooth 5.0 to any device. You can connect it to multiple devices, meaning that, you know, I can have it connected to my iPhone and my Android and then switch back and forth between those. It's unique that... I can either turn on just one side and have the sound coming out of just one side, either side, or I could turn them both on and it'll be like stereo. So each side has little buttons on here for controlling that side. If they're both turned on, then it doesn't matter which buttons you press, it will control everything. Um, you can also talk, like answer phone calls and stuff with these glasses. And the microphone is actually really impressive. I was kind of surprised. Oh yeah, you called me on it, didn't I you? I called you, yeah. And it's, you know, it sounds great. You would think that it wouldn't because the microphone is probably up here somewhere. But yeah, they actually sound really good. So, um, if you would like to win this, very simple, just like all of our contests here on TalkBack, you just need to leave a comment to this live stream Leave a comment saying that you would like to win the glasses, and the keyword is glasses, glasses, because that's how we search for the, the winner. We search by the filter out through the keywords. Make sure you spell it correctly. Because spell if it's it correctly. In, yeah, so G-L-A-S-S-E-S. -S -S -E -S. Yeah, three S's in glasses. <laughs> but not in a row. <laughs> not in a row. Uh, and then if you could, it's not required, but if you wouldn't mind giving the video an old like, I would appreciate that. Um, and but, everyone, make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. There's, yeah. there's a lot of people that watch that aren't subscribed. Yeah, we put these videos out every single uh, every single month, usually around the first of the month, although, like I said before, we're late this, this month. Something else about these glasses is the lenses are polarized and they're interchangeable. So if you, um, they have other glass, they have other, bleh, they have other lens options on the website. <clears throat> okay, uh, Miguel asked, did you say the NFB gives free folding cane? If so, where and how do I get it? <coughs> Not a free folding cane. It's a free rigid cane. It's a straight cane. Uh, the folding canes, they have them, but you have to buy them. But it, it wasn't expensive. Like mine, I got a, I think it's a 55 inch sev, seven segment. And I think it was probably around like 30 bucks or something, 40 bucks. It wasn't bad at all. So if you search for, um, like I said, mine was, is branded Chris Parks. P-A-R-K-S. Chris Parks is a tech, assistive technology manufacturer designer guy. And mine is branded Chris Parks, but it's the exact same kind of cane with the flat uh, metal disc tip thing. 
gliding glide tip, I think is what they call it. So you can find it that way. Um, if you, I'm sorry, if you are interested in the free canes from NFB, go to their website. There's a link. I think it's at the top to get a free cane. Um, okay. In addition, I'm a research assistant in education for the visually impaired. I wonder, is there any research center for the blind in the U.S.? I don't know, but I wanted to. I don't. I don't know if you know, but I just wanted to say that so if someone knows in the comments, they can they can put that in there. I mean, I'm sure there is. Right? I, yeah, I, I guess it kind of depends on what you mean for research. If you're talking about like research on curing certain blindnesses, yeah, there's study. There's a lot of studies going on, but I don't know that there's one centralized location. Um, the foundation fighting blindness is kind of a clearinghouse for finding those types of um, studies that are going on but if you're talking about other research that's not that's not like specifically like cure for vision disease type thing i don't know i don't know if there's something like that it would be interesting to know um Richard Reeves said, Sam, would you mind restating your email address? I have composed an email with instructions to re-enable the triple tap on Android. Oh, awesome. Yes. Sam at theblindlife.net. My website is theblindlife.net, and my email is sam at theblindlife.net. Um, and several people have mentioned that the Blind Kitchen lady has um, some good measuring devices in her store. Too not, not me, not medicine droppers, but yeah, other measuring food related. I, mean, I don't think she has medicine droppers on there anywhere. It's, it's all yeah, it's all food and cooking related. Um, and here come all the comments for the glasses. <laughs> okay. Now, do comments in the live chat work, or does it have to be? No, no, I'm sorry. Yes, they will not. Comments in the live chat will not work. You'll have to wait till this is done and then come back and leave a comment on the video. Yeah, so like in a half hour from now, go to the, go to the Blind Life on YouTube and it'll be the most recently updated video and leave a comment there. Sorry, everyone's put it on here. <laughs> <laughs> glasses, glasses, glasses. Yeah, unfortunately, the live chat is kind of weird and it keeps it I don't even, I guess you can get into it again later, but it keeps it separate from yeah. the regular comments, which I don't, I don't know why it does that. Okay. Tom Hendrickson said, is there a transcript of this talk back? Um, I don't know that there's a, there's not a transcript. It can be rewatched. It's, it's, it's live now, but once we're done, it'll be available to rewatch it. Yeah. No, no transcripts. Um. Larry uh, Garisi was just saying, I just wanted to let you all know that ham radio is a great hobby of visually impaired people. I've been at it for 53 years. Yeah, it, it's, um, I was at a conference, I don't remember which one, um, a couple years ago, and there was a whole organization, like a whole group of ham radio uh, enthusiasts. So yeah, you're right, it's pretty, it's pretty big in the blind world. <clears throat> Okay, Hanson blind, blind guy said, "Hey Sam, free jujitsu lesson if you're ever out here in California with me." <laughs> in the dangerous part of California, you were talking about. <laughs> Where you'll need it. <laughs> awesome, I'd love to. We we took judo. Rachel and I took judo, and we were actually pretty good at it, weren't yeah. we? I might have even been better than Sam at it. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> we never went up against each other to test our skills. Um. Uh, da, da, da. There's something else on here. Hold on. Oh, Aniko Gary said, "Hey Sam, I have a question. Can you link them up to Bluetooth hearing aids?" Um, I think both hearing aids and the glasses are speakers, so even if they linked, they wouldn't do anything, right? Yeah. Uh, well, except for the phone call coming in, like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. I'll send you everything, the box, there's a little paper in there, there's a carrying case, so you can, you know, if you, if you win them or you, you can research it. You can also go to the website. Um, once again, my video will come out in a couple days and I'll have links to everything there, but if you, you know, maybe it says it in the website. Um, Tawny said, you in those glasses with a couple of canes is the Blind Life logo. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we should have Skylar take some pictures of you with those and two canes crossed. Crossed right in front of yeah. me. Yeah. Um, you see my bald head looks like a skull? A little bit. A little bit. Um, Michael Goleski says, can you talk about CSUN more in depth? I'm making a decision ongoing. Yeah, CSUN, it's, it's arguably the largest 
AT conference in the nation each year. <coughs> um, it's held currently at the um, Anaheim Marriott in Anaheim, California. Uh, they have two exhibit halls. That's how big it is. It has two exhibit halls. So, um, and it has the largest gathering of AT for, for the blind and visually impaired. Uh, it, I mean, it, it caters to all disabilities, but the most there is for the blind is there at CSUN. Uh, the, the sessions and the conference itself, I've never attended that, the actual sessions. I'm sure they're great and wonderful. Continuing education credits, all of that. CSUN also has a lot of after hour events. That's pretty cool. A lot of parties and stuff. Um, it's right next to Disneyland, obviously, so if, if you want to do any of that, it's right there. Uh, Stevie Wonder goes every year. I've met him twice. Last year I did a demo for him and got to chat with him for a little while. It was pretty cool. So if that's, if that's the deciding factor right there. <laughs> yeah, so the only part Sam can really speak on is the exhibit hall, which is right up his alley. You love an exhibit hall filled with tech items. I do. Like, And then the big companies are always there. Google's there. Microsoft's always there. Amazon is always there. Sony is always there. Um, Apple never goes to any of these conferences. Kind of weird. Really? Yeah, they never do. Android has sessions. I've never seen a booth, but I've seen sessions. Well, I guess Apple did have a session. Somebody had an Apple session at ATIA. But yeah, Android and, and Apple never have booths. Hmm. But Microsoft, Google. Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Sony, um, and then all of the big AT companies are always there, generally. Okay. Uh, it's a good time. Yeah, you always, you always like it. And it's a beautiful area, that part of, of L.A. Um, Mike Wheeler said, Sam, I do believe after the stream is over, you have to go and turn on the transcript in studios for the live stream. Okay. I, I was wondering, as we were talking about it, I was thinking there's some way to do it through YouTube. Um, so we'll look into that. Um, Tony Dudley said, hi, do you need some sight for these glasses? Well, the, the glasses, it's really not about them being glasses. They're just a speaker that don't go in your ear. That's really what the point of the glasses is. Yeah, they're just regular sunglasses with um, a Bluetooth speaker. So like, Instead of wearing headphones and sunglasses, you could wear these and listen to your music, but it keeps your ears open. That's kind of the point of them. So you can stay aware of your surroundings while listening to your music or your audiobooks. In my case, I listen to audiobooks on them. But they don't do anything else. They're just regular sunglasses. Okay. I think, I think we've got it. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, anything like that, let me know in the comments down below. But as we said, be sure to come back after we end the stream and leave your comment if you want to win the glasses using the keyword glasses. Yeah, because the live chat will not show up when we do the search for, do the random search yeah. for the winner. And, and I'll send them to anywhere. If you're in Turkey, that's fine. We'll send them there. <laughs> You say that, but the one time we tried to do that was like going to be $150 to send them somewhere crazy. Yeah, unless you're, yeah. <laughs> the Philippines, I don't know. They wanted a lot of money to send something there. Was it the Philippines? I think it was, was, yeah. Okay, I couldn't yeah. remember where it was. It was crazy expensive. It was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So crazy. within reason. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Um, but yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much once again. Um, Rachel, any last thing you need to say before we head out? Nope. Okay, let me go back to my live stream here so I can end it. All right, see you all later. And like we said, don't forget to go leave a message in the actual comments, not the live chat stream, but the actual comments. Yes. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.